Hello, my name is Steve Gottlieb and I made up their linear algebra video. At this point I would love for you to sit back and view a sample demonstration. That way you get to see a little bit of my teaching style. I'm going to show you how to multiply two matrices. But before that we need to talk about the dot product. We have two lists of numbers. Seven, three, two, one, negative four, and the second list, negative one, two, zero, negative three, negative two. And we want to compute the dot product between these two lists of numbers. The lists are really called vectors. And how you compute the dot product is very simple. You multiply the first set of numbers, then you multiply the next set of numbers, you multiply the next pair of numbers, and you keep adding up the results. You multiply the next two, which is negative three, adding negative three, the same as just taking away three, and then you add the last product, which is eight. And if I did my arithmetic correctly, this turns out to be 4. So the dot product between these two is 4. Now, writing each list or each vector vertically is pretty easy to see, for example, what to multiply the 7 by, what to multiply the negative 4 by. If one or both of these vectors were written horizontally, it would be less obvious what pair we multiply. Okay, we multiply the first entries and the second entries and the third entries and the fourth entry and the fifth entry. It would be very simple to make a careless mistake and multiply say the fourth entry by the third entry. You might mistakenly multiply the fourth entry by the third entry. Very simple mistake, careless. It doesn't mean you don't know what you're doing. But nonetheless, it's easy to make. But if you write it vertically, if you write both vectors vertically, it'll kind of be hard to multiply or think that you should multiply the 1 with the negative 2. It would still be a careless mistake, not a big deal, but let's try to remove careless mistakes. Now when it comes to matrix multiplication, all you do is a number of these dot products. You just keep doing one dot product after another. So why don't we try multiplying two matrices? Suppose, a matrix is just an array of numbers. Suppose you have this matrix. You want to multiply by this matrix. 1, 0, negative 1, 2, 1, negative 1. And when you multiply two matrices, you get a matrix. So it's going to equal an array of numbers. And when you multiply two matrices, you multiply or you dot the rows in the first matrix by the columns in the second matrix. You want to multiply each row in the first matrix by each column in the second matrix. And we can do this in random order, but might as well do it in a fashion where you'll see what should come next. Some logical ordering. Letters dot row one with column one. And after that, I'll dot row 1 with column 2, and then row 1 with column 3, etc., until I'm done with columns. 
and then I'll go on to row two. Well, row one, okay, so rows go across. Three, one, negative one is row one. So directed zero, two, negative two is row two, and one, zero, one is row three. Columns, on the other hand, go top to bottom. One, zero, negative one is the first column. Two, one, negative one is the second column. So I'm going to do row one, and again, I'm going to write everything vertically. You take row one, which is three, one, negative one, and you dot it with column one, which is one, zero, negative one. Just multiply across. That product is three, that product is zero, and that product is one. Those three numbers add up to four. Now, where do I put the 4? I put it in row 1, column 1. How about we have column 1, column 2, column 3, row 1, row 2, row 3. Possibly we'll need more rows. Possibly we'll need less columns. But nonetheless, a 4 is going to be in row 1, column 1. A 4 is right there. I know this is the right place to put it, because when I look to the left, I see row 1, and when I look to the top, I see column 1. Row 1, column 1. Now we're going to do row 1, which is 3, 1, negative 1, dotted with column 2. That's column 2. 2, 1, negative 1. 2, 1, negative 1. You get 6 plus 1 plus another 1. Turns out to be 8. Row 1, column 2 should give us the number 8, which goes right there. I know this is right. So I look across, I see row 1, and I look up, I see column 2 exactly what I'm supposed to get. Okay, so now I did, I dotted row 1 with column 1, row 1 was column 2. Now, it's only logical to try to do row 1 with column 3. Okay, I know what row 1 is, it's 3, 1, negative 1. Okay, but I, what's column 3? Well, we have column 1, column 2, oh, there is no third column of numbers. We have our first column of numbers, a second column of numbers, but not a third column. So you can't dot row 1 with columns 3. So we are done with row 1. That means we go on to row 2. I attempted to do row 1 with column 3. It's not my fault there's no column 3. So now I'm going to dot row 2 up with all the columns that I have. Row 2 dotted with column 1. Row 2 is 0, 2, negative 1. You just write it downward. 0, 2, negative 1. And I dot this with column 1, which is 1, 0, negative 1. Just remember, the first matrix you get the rows from, and the second matrix or the right matrix you get the columns from. And the first column is 1, 0, negative 1. And if you multiply these two, you're going to get 1. Because 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1. So where do I put this 1? No random guessing. It's right here. Put it in row 2, column 1. Right here. Row 2. Column 1. Now, I do, I dot row 2 with column 2. Well, row 2 is still 0, 2, negative 1. And if it isn't, then I have a mistake here. Row 2 is 0, 2, negative 1. And I dot it with column 2. 2, 1, negative 1. Dot it with 2, 1, negative 1. Again, this is going to be 1. You get, sorry, it's going to be 3. 0 plus 2 plus 1. 
zero plus two plus one, why that's three. So in row two, column two, I put a three right here. I know this is right. Row two is to the left, column two is right above. And I attempt to do dot row two with columns three, and I might have a row two, and again, whenever I say rows, that's what I'm talking about from the first matrix, and columns are always from the second matrix. I might have a row two, but I don't have a column three. I have column one, column two, but no column three. So I can't do this one, which means I'm done with row two. I dotted row two, which each column, each and every column in that second matrix. So now I go on to row three, if in fact there is a row three. If there's no row three, that's when I stop. I'm completely done. But if you look at the left matrix, it does have a row three. Row three is one, zero, one. So I'm going to dot row three with column one. Row three is one, zero, one. Okay, one, zero, one. And I dot this with column one, which is one, zero, negative one. And this time I'm going to get zero, because I have one, I add zero, it's still one. Now I take away one. One times negative one is minus one. So I get zero. One plus zero plus a negative one is zero. Well, where do I put the zero? Row three, column one. Okay, put it right here. Row three, column one. Looking good. Now I do row three with column two. Row three is still one, zero, one. One, zero, one. And column two is two, one, negative one. Two, one, negative one. Looks like I'm going to get a 1 this time. 2 plus 0. 0 times 1 is 0. Plus 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Adding a negative 1, the same as taking away 1. 2 plus 0 is 2. Minus 1 is 1. Hence, their entry in the third row, second column, position will be 1. I hope I said third row, second column. And this is absolutely right. Third row, second column. Okay, so I did, I dotted row three with column one, column two. If I attempted to dot row three with column three, I can't do that. So I'm done with row three. I dotted row three, which each and every column of the second matrix. Okay, so now I go on to row four. Now I'm up to row four. I'm going to dot row four with each and every column of that second matrix, if it's possible. Row four with, doesn't even matter what column I put, I'll put one, but I can't possibly do that because I don't have a fourth row. This is the first row. This is the second row. This is the third row. There's no fourth row. I'm done. That's my answer on the right. And the only thing I'll do is I'll clean it up by just saying that there's no column three. You don't need to write C1, C2, etc. You could just write the answer down as 4, 8, 1, 3, 0, 1. If you multiply this matrix by this matrix, that's going to be the result in matrix. Let me check that very quick, quickly. So far it looks good. Okay, that looks correct. This completes the sample demonstration. Hope you learned a little bit about dot products and matrix multiplication. Most of all, I wish you great success with your linear algebra class. And I thank you once again for viewing my video. Good luck.